Okay, so this is going to be a do-it-yourself how to build video for the Solon 1.8. And I'll have all the links to all the parts up at laserhacker.com. Check the video description for links to laserhacker.com for the uh, build, parts, sources, all of that. Also check teslamaker.com for the complete ready-to-go units. So let me open this up here and show you what uh, we're going to be building. This is the complete built-up unit as it's received by those who buy it from teslamaker.com. So you got your LED light bulbs, the manual to your line fuel uh, USB power bank, and here you've got a really cool little cord that connects uh, to iPhones, the Apple devices, as well as micro USB. We'll look at that in a second. But uh, here's the, the main uh, heart of the unit. This is the Solon 1.8. It's got the line fuel. This is a 57 watt hour battery pack here. It's got a flashlight. So to operate the flashlight, you click twice, click twice to turn it off. You can disconnect the unit here and uh, take this off and use it as a flashlight or bring it to your tent or whatever and run it separately. Uh, I usually keep mine connected to the panel all the time. So. And for anybody that's already ordered these and noticing that the Velcro is a little different, we've upgraded the Velcro. This is now a heat-resistant Velcro product from 3M. And being heat-resistant, uh, I think it's a better choice than the previous dual-lock Velcro. We also heard reports from people having trouble with the dual-lock Velcro because the dual-lock Velcro kind of looks like this on both sides. It doesn't have the loop and the hook design. It just kind of meshes in like this and it's a little bit difficult to press in and remove. So we've gone to this Velcro and for those of you who are building this yourself, you can follow the links like I said to see that. But anyway, that's the uh, basic package. You can plug in a couple uh, USB powered uh, LED light bulbs for camping. I do have some specs. I've been doing some runtime testing. I can run two of these uh, LED light bulbs for over seven hours. So you could run one of these for 14 hours. And considering the fact that you can recharge the entire battery bank back up to four bars in less time than that, it's a very uh, attractive setup. So one of these for about 14 hours, two of these for over seven hours as well as the fact that you can charge your iPad, your iPhone. Actually, there's a lot of devices, if you stop and think about it these days, that are USB-powered devices. You've got your GoPros, your cameras. You even have the e-flight line of small RC airplanes. You know, that's something I really enjoy, as well as my boys. And most of those have USB um, chargers for the little RC airplanes. So there's just a lot of stuff that you can do with a setup like this. So anyway, uh, check out teslamaker.com if you're not interested in building one. And for those of you that want to tackle building one of these yourself, uh, it's a very easy build as you'll see here in the video. So we'll just go over it step by step. And this video will equip you with all the information you need, know, need to know to build your own, as well as links to the parts, etc. So let's get started. Okay, so the first step that I always start with is applying the stickers. Now, if you're doing a do-it-yourself build on this, uh, you will not have these stickers. I currently have no plans on selling these stickers at teslamaker.com, but, uh, you know, it's something that I apply on here to build a reputation for the name, for those who are interested in buying this ready-made, it's kind of nice to have these stickers on it. So, let's line these up here. And I always line the sticker up to the dark line here, like that. So that's the first step. And the second step, and like I said, it's a very easy build. It's not that complicated. This, uh, there's two white sections on the USB, and I consider that the top in this application. And what I do is I bend this into an M shape. And this is not something that's going to be bent out of this shape. You know, it's going to stay in this shape. So while it may not be ideal to bend your USB cord in a sharp bend like this normally, for this single uh, use case, it seems to work very well. So we bend an M shape in the 5-inch USB cord and plug that into place like that. And then we need to open up the uh, Lime Fuel power bank. Lime Fuel makes such a great product on this. And uh, I'll put all the links to all this stuff at laserhacker.com, but I've just been so happy with uh, their product, the way it has the pass through charging, um, just everything about it. So, anyway, they cost more than a lot of the other USB banks on the market, but I think they're well worth it. 
So they come in this interesting box like this. But anyway, for this case, we are going to keep out the manual, the USB bank, and this uh, power cord. And the rest of this I will put over here. Okay, we're done with the stickers. <clears throat> All right, so the Lime Fuel Power Bank. Uh, you double click to bring on the flashlight. You can check the charge, it's at three bars. Now, I've done some testing. It's winter, so the sun's low in the horizon, but if you run this down to a single bar, and that's kind of the way I'd recommend using it, you can fully discharge it, it's fine, but I think it'll last longer if you just bring it down to a single bar. It's a 57 watt hour battery, over 15,000 milliamp hours. I mean, comparable products in the market have like a 3,000 milliamp hour battery, so a lot of capacity here. But you can bring it down to three bars, and I've been able to recharge it from there back up to four bars in just over three hours, you know, three to four hours. I've been doing some experimenting with full discharge, you know, running two LED lights on here for like seven plus hours, and then recharging this. It took just over 11 hours, uh, winter sun, broken clouds. So I charged it at the span of one day into, the sun sets early here over the back of a hill, so I did a partial charge one day, charged it up the next morning, and brought it back up to four bars. So anyway, that gives some idea on the charge uh, time. When the four LEDs light, it is fully charged. At this point, it's 50% uh, charged. Now, I have noticed that when I charge this on the power cord, like, say, overnight, eventually the four lights will completely stop blinking. Now, a lot of times when I'm charging this in the sun, the fourth light's blinking, but if you remove it from the sun and check the capacity, it shows four bars, which Lime Fuel says is a full charge. So I'll have to do more testing, and as summer gets here and I get, you know, the summer sun, I can run this through its paces and publish the actual charge and discharge times over at teslamaker.com. In the meantime, for everybody that's bought one of these, feel free to share with me uh, the charge time that it's taking you to charge this up. I would love to get that data, so let's share that and we'll proceed from there. So anyway, this is ready to put down. One of the first things I do is I go ahead and I connect it. And I get this positioned with the uh, solar voltage controller with enough space so that you can click the flashlight on and off. You don't want to bring this up so close that you can't connect that on or click that and reach around here to that. The other thing is you don't want to overstress the cable, so right about there. So at this point, we'll take two of the pieces of Velcro, and this is going to... I usually put the fuzzy side on the panel. So anyway, I'm going to put one on either side of this here. You want to make sure this is nice and clean when you apply these. This is a super good adhesive on this, so it's going to stick very well here. All right, now we're going to take the fuzzy side and we're going to go ahead and stick it to that. And that's just to make this line up easier. There we go. So now I'm going to remove this uh, backing from the adhesive. And we'll connect this into here and we will line it up exactly where we want this. And press down and that is now attached. It's easily removable and yet held quite securely. So that portion is done. Now what we need to do is connect this little, uh, I call this the USB cord clip and I'll include a link to this over at laserhacker.com but you just peel off one side you apply the double sided adhesive to it then I just break this portion off and then remove this side and now that's ready and I put it right here at the valley of the uh, M you know the M that we formed earlier and then you just want to bring this down and attach this to the panel and that keeps this cord from flying out and hooking on stuff. So when you hook this on a carabiner and it's on your backpack or whatever, this uh, holds the cord in a nice, secure location, but yet it allows you to disconnect, remove this if you need to, etc. So I really uh, am pretty happy with the way that's working out at this point. So what I usually do at this point is I want to verify that this whole charge system is working because... I just want to double check everything and make sure it all works properly. Now, the sun is low in the horizon right now, so I'm going to go ahead and just use a light bulb. And you can see that the charge indicator came on. And this indicates that it is charging. So with just the light bulb, we can verify 
that the system is indeed working. That's really cool. To me, that's the most fun step of the build process, actually. <clears throat> okay, so one last step here. We're going to just install the uh, carabiner in the upper right corner. And that completes the build process for the Solar One Eight. You couple that up with a couple of these uh, LED light bulbs, and you have a complete and finished uh, Solon 1.8 ready to go. So as you can see, the build process is incredibly easy on this. I'll go over one more thing uh, on this. is This is this really cool cable that Lime Fuel includes with this. And uh, this cable will allow you to do a, a couple interesting things. So obviously, you could plug and charge up the power bank on an AC uh, adapter if you wanted to. Of course, I recommend just leaving it in the sun. But uh, that is one possibility with a cord like this. The other thing you can do is charge up another device that uses the uh, iPhone pin connector here. So I can plug my iPhone into this and charge my iPhone, which is very convenient. But in addition to that, Limefield did a really cool thing on this cord. You can pop this up and now you get this little micro USB connector. And that's pretty cool. You know, that could plug into this and then charge uh, or, you know, other things. So this is a very uh, versatile little plug here and uh, very, very cool. So anyway, that's what's up with that. And that completes this build video.